Now, I'm really looking forward to the Regional Teaching Awards on Thursday. It's always a great event, and this week we're featuring three people who've been nominated. Our first teacher works at Rockingham Primary in Corby. Paula Harker is in the running in the primary school teacher category. But instead of talking to the judges, we asked her pupils what they thought of her. So is it a ghost, or what would you call this? A devil. Ooh. Mrs Harker is a good teacher because she is always kind, she's caring. What's up today? Are you fed up with the task or fed up with work or fed up with the group? Or? Because you're in her class, school's never boring. You want to come to school. There are people that need to finish off their ghosts and demons. A bit sinister and a bit... Ooh. Oh, I love it. I'm chilling. She's nice, she can be a lot of fun. Can you put your hands up if you haven't done the vocabulary task on the board yet? Who thinks Mrs Harker is a brilliant teacher? Me! She's a role model not only to, to the children, but also to all the staff in school. And I was sitting in a meeting with a group of teachers recently, and they said she just doesn't realise how extremely exciting it is to work alongside her. And I think that's the key word, is she is inspirational. She doesn't freak out or, like, has a hissy fit. OK, right, can I go on your seats for a minute, guys? <laughs> Go and sit down, Robin. It's only got one eye, Cara. It's yeah. scary. No, it's like a cyclops. No, the other are they one's Greek? Through. You know, if you're not excited about it, how can you get, expect the children to be excited about it? But no, no. I mean, the kids are brilliant, and you sort of feed off their enthusiasm. Um, they're they are lovely, lovely school, lovely children. She's nice, and she don't always get into a gramp when something happens. Do you remember doing hieroglyphics when, when you did the Egyptians and Miss Perry? <laughs> Sensible hats on. I'm working. Casey, please put the stick down. I'd give Mrs. Harker a 10 out of 10. I'd give Mrs. Harker a 10 out of 10. I would give Miss Harker a 10 out of 10. I would give Miss Harker a mark of 9 out of 10. <laughs> I love it. 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10. But I like the fact she doesn't get into a grump. Or a hissy fit. Or a hissy fit. Yeah, or doesn't important. freak out either. She's very, you know, very calm. <laughs> now, Wimbledon began today, but sadly it was bad news for Elena Baltacha. Match point, Martic. The British women's number one, who's from Ipswich, crashed out in the first round. She took the first set against Petra Martic, but ended up losing 2-6, 7-5, 6-3. But tonight, we're concentrating on the players battling to make it to Wimbledon in the first place. Their quest began last week, a few miles from Wimbledon, at Roehampton. Tom Williams has been exploring the slightly less glamorous side of tennis. <laughs> It feels like Wimbledon, but these players are just trying to get there. A mix of established stars and emerging talents, Cambridge's Lisa Wyborn is on the rise. This, the week of her life, the moment she's worked for. I guess it's been tough, like on my family and stuff. They've had to give up a lot of time to come to tournaments. And obviously I moved out when I was like 13 to go train. And obviously the expense of playing tennis is a lot for a family to cover, but they, they want me to do well, so they do what they can. A professional player at 19, but money's tight. Scraping by on limited funding and limited prize money from minor events, it's not easy to make a living. Just making it this far is some achievement for Lisa, world ranking 413 and British number 11. She's had to come through two qualifying rounds, plus two rounds here at Roehampton to be one win away from making it to the grandest stage of all. The tension is palpable. The final qualifier didn't go her way. As frustration grew, her opponent grew stronger. Match point and Lisa's Wimbledon dream over for this year. The level of this tennis here is like unbelievable. To come here and like even win a couple of matches, I just learnt a lot about my game and know that I can compete with these girls, which is the most important thing. She comes in every day, she works hard, she goes to bed at the right time, she gets up early for practice, she's eating the right things now. She's just doing all the little things, you know, and, and eventually they, you know, they're starting to come together now. It's a tortuous journey, sacrifices to be made. But if in years to come she steps out on centre court, it'll all have been worth it. Tom Williams, BBC Look East, Roehampton. Well, from tennis to football now, and if you're an England fan, you're probably still trying to recover from Friday's abysmal performance against Algeria.
But if you think Fabio Capello's got problems, what about World Cup Mike? Amazingly, he too is facing an early exit. World Cup Mini on the back of a low loader. It was the sight England fans never wanted to see. It's a bit like Wayne Rooney, not firing on all cylinders. A problem with the head gasket and doubtful for Wednesday's big game against Slovenia. If you're still feeling fed up, spare a thought for fans like Andy and Kirsty Payne from Cambridge, who spent a small fortune going to South Africa. Everyone will agree that that was one of the worst England performances in a game that mattered uh, that any of us have ever seen. This is my seventh World Cup and I've seen plenty of great performances. Um, and we've really got to get back to that, that level very, very quickly. There is some good news. Matthew Upson from this in Norfolk will play against Slovenia, but the future for World Cup Mini is looking far less rosy. I don't think she's going to be fit for Wednesday. Now, here's an offer. If you'd like World Cup Mike to come and watch the game with you, just drop me a quick email. Tell me a bit about the family, who's going to be watching, and what kind of cake you serve at halftime, and I might see you on Wednesday afternoon. Well, if he I'm doesn't get any invitations, I'll get him. I'll work. get him round mine. He can cheer me up. <laughs> Even my seven-week-old daughter went to sleep watching the match on Friday. Did you watch it? I did. After the draw with the USA the other week. Yes. Sad, sad stuff. It was sad stuff. <laughs> it can only get better, though. Very diplomatic. And weather-wise, actually, uh, things are looking pretty good for the next uh, couple of days. We've got some pictures today from Midsummer Common in Cambridge. Uh, longest day of the year today, so a lot of people out enjoying the sunshine that'll last uh, well into this evening. Uh, we'll look at uh, the surface chart now and the reason for that uh, sunshine. A uh, big area of high pressure that's just uh, down across southwestern Britain. That's going to continue to bring us some fine and dry weather for the next couple of days. Underneath that high, hardly a cloud in the sky to start the day a little bit in the east some patchy cumulus cloud developed through the afternoon though and as we go into the evening that's going to thin out generally clearing for a lot of places we'll still have some patchy cloud around at times but generally some clear skies particularly toward the end of the night and uh, temperature wise tonight I think it's going to drop off to about 9 or 10 degrees Celsius really right about average for this time of year perhaps a little bit milder in the west and that'll be in a light southerly breeze for the most part through tonight then for tomorrow that area of high pressure actually moving even more over us through the day and uh, that's going to continue to bring us plenty of sunshine it'll start off a little bit cloudy in the east uh, similar to today but otherwise fine and dry with sunny spells across the region tomorrow and your temperatures will be very similar to what you had today if not a degree or two warmer so 24 celsius across parts of hertfordshire we do have a south to southeasterly wind so just a little bit cooler particularly on the essex coast as we go into the afternoon tomorrow but generally feeling quite uh, warm through the day. Then a weak uh, front will just push down from the north uh, through the end of the week. That's going to bring a little bit more cloud, but it should be dry uh, through that front. Um, and temperature-wise, I think we are looking at 24 or 25 Celsius, maybe even a 26 Celsius in one or two spots in the south. Uh, that front will arrive and cool things down just a touch into Saturday, uh, but then I think we rebound back to 25 Celsius again on Sunday. Generally light southwesterly winds, they'll turn more south to southeasterly toward the end of the week. And then your overnight lows generally, 11 or 12 Celsius, uh, that's in the low 50s in Fahrenheit, above average for the time of year. Chris, thank you. Finally, a five-day forecast we can be proud of, I think. Well, just before we go, a reminder of our main story tonight. And the sons of David Gray have travelled to Germany to confront the man who killed their father. Last week, Dr. Daniel Urbani was struck off for injecting Mr. Gray with ten times the recommended dose of diamorphine. Both his sons were arrested by German police after interrupting Urbani at a medical conference. Tonight, one of our MEPs called for an investigation into why the doctor never stood trial in the UK. We need to make sure that the CPS did everything in their power to bring um, the person to trial. And as I said, we need to make sure that it, if it wasn't done right this time, that it is done right in the future, because patient safety must come first. That's all from us for this evening. Have a very good evening. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.